Mr. Fritz, how are you? Good morning, Chairman Pierce. Uh, members of the board, I'm Jonathan Fritz um, with Morgan Lewis and Bacchius. I'm here on behalf of the Coalition for a Democratic Workplace, uh, which is a coalition of hundreds of employer associations, individual employers, and other organizations that represent millions of businesses of all sizes. They employ tens of millions of individuals working in every industry in every region of the United States. I'd like to focus my remarks on how the scheduling of the pre-election hearing affects uh, the negotiation of an election agreement. Uh, as the board is well aware, there is no pre-election litigation in 90% of cases under the current rules, and that's because in 90% of cases, there's an election agreement. So if the purpose of the proposed rule is to avoid litigation, the board should make sure that there's enough time for the parties to negotiate an election agreement and to do so in an intelligent way that doesn't produce disputes after the fact. The proposed rule provides that the pre-election hearing would be scheduled seven days after the notice of the hearing is served, absent special circumstances. The proposed rule would limit the discretion that regional directors currently have to schedule the hearing more than seven days after the petition is filed. And as, as Maury discussed, I think the practice is somewhere in the seven to, day, seven to ten day period is, is where that discretion is currently exercised. But I think even more significant than that is, is that the proposed rule seems to limit a regional district, director's discretion to postpone the hearing uh, but the rule isn't clear about that. There's nothing that I see in the proposed rule about postponements and whether the current standard and discretion would change. Uh, but under current procedures, regional directors do generally grant postponement requests up to 14 days after the hearing, after the petition is filed. And these postponement requests are frequently productive and they provide more time for the parties to negotiate a step. I don't think that time is typically used to prepare for a hearing, to prepare for litigation. It may be, but I think in the vast majority of cases, that time is used to negotiate a step. And so if the proposed rule can be read, and I think it can be read, to, to limit a regional director's discretion to postpone the hearing, at least to that 14-day mark, I think, I think that's going to be a problem in terms of providing the parties enough time to negotiate a step. As I read the proposed rule, it would cut in half what in practice is the standard. 14 days with a postponement request down to seven days, absent special circumstances. And seven days is just not that much time to negotiate a step. Before an employer can even begin to negotiate a step, a lot of things must happen. First, the petition is filed, but it has to get to the right person in the company who knows what to do with it. And that can take a couple of days, it can take more. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a small business or, or a large corporation, getting it to the right person sometimes consumes a couple of those days, sometimes more of that initial seven-day period. The company then has to retain counsel. Uh, once counsel is retained, uh, they quickly drop everything that they're, do that they're doing and start to gather information about the bargain unit, the petition, um, whether the unit's appropriate, whether there are other employees who should be included, whether there are issues of supervisory status, whether there's some sort of bar to the election, once counsel has figured all of that out, then he or she can start the process of intelligently negotiating an election agreement. The ground rules for this panel said that we should assume that no position statement is, is required. Um, but I will note that if that requirement is imposed, then that position statement, the list that would go with it, would just give counsel more to do during that initial seven-day period, which means even less time to negotiate the step. So 
CDD, CDW urges the board to maintain the current practice of allowing regional directors discretion to schedule the hearing more than seven days after the petition is filed and to maintain the discretion that they have now to postpone the hearing up to 14 days after the hearing is filed and, and sometimes more in extraordinary circumstances. This is time well spent and in the vast majority of the cases it's going to lead to an election agreement. Thank you. A few follow-ups. Um, first of all, it sounds like, and tell me if this is not an accurate characterization of your position after uh, I read your comments, um, whether or not there's going to be a formal statement of position that's produced. Do you have to think through the issues ahead of time to produce a stipulated election agreement? Yes. I mean, I think, I think that's the issue is, is there's a significant amount of time and effort that goes into just figuring out what the unit is. Council may not even know the business. It may be a new client. And so you have to understand the business. You have to understand the unit. You have to understand what other issues there may be. And I think that has to happen before you negotiate a step. Otherwise, you're, you're just not negotiating with any information or intelligence. Okay. If that was the question. Is it right? Well, is it possible, and, and or is it usual to be able to negotiate a stipulation um, and think through these issues in less time than it would take for an actual hearing to have happen? Under let's just say the Croft Metal Standard. I think it's, I think it's hard to say that negotiating a stip would necessarily take less time than preparing for the hearing, if, if that's the question you're asking. Because I think everything that precedes the negotiation, at least in my experience, is something that you would do to identify the issues that may be subject to litigation. Um, and so if you're going to negotiate a STIP, I think you have to know what the issues are that you might go to hearing on. And then you have to decide if you can resolve them. Um, so the process of identifying those issues, what the evidence is, uh, what the circumstances are, that's going to happen, I think, regardless of whether you go to a hearing or whether you go to a STIP. And it's only once you've done all that that you, you really begin the process of negotiating a STIP. So I don't think there is a real difference, if I'm understanding the question, in terms of what the standard should be, whether you're, you're going to have a STIP or, or whether you're going to have a hearing. And I don't think the time necessary is necessarily all that different. Um, and I think when the postponement request is made for up to 14 days, I think, it, at least in my experience, in many cases, it's because you're trying to negotiate a STIP. You may also be preparing for the hearing as a fallback if you don't get a STIP. But in many cases, that's additional time that you need to go back and forth with the board agent, with um, counsel for the union, to, to work it out. Has, has it been your experience that the date of the hearing provides a deadline, if you will, for getting that stip? It does. It certainly does. Um, and, and, and the morning of the hearing, even. But I think the concern is if, if you tighten it down to seven days, I think it's just not going to give enough time to do that, and you're going to back into situations where you have a hearing or you're going to have very rushed negotiations where mistakes are going to get made, disputes are going to happen down the road because you haven't intelligently negotiated. And is there some optimal time between the 7 and the 14? Or is it just that's what it is, so that's what you base it on? Well, our position is, is the current practice provides discretion 7 to 14 days. I think in practice, 14 days is, is usually the standard, and I think 14 days, while tight, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's easy to get it done even in 14 days. But I think that's the current standard, and, and in 90% of cases, you get a stip in that period of time. Yeah, and follow up to that, you know, if you talk to some federal court judges, they might say that the quickest way to get a settlement of a complicated case, in fact, I think some judges have said this, is to take a complicated case and say, you're going to trial next week. And so, I mean, if you assume hypothetically that seven days is an artificially tight deadline, uh, for preparing for a hearing, why would that be a bad thing? I mean, A, would that uh, really create an incentive to have more stipulations? 
and B, you made reference to problems that might exist if the parties rush to a stipulation, and, and what do you mean by problems? Well, I think the, the first um, part of the question, I think, is, is really about whether, um, whether there's enough time to figure out what the issues are, um, determine what you might litigate. Um, and I think if you're going to negotiate from a, a, a standpoint where you know what the issues are, you know what you're prepared to go to hearing on, you, you know how strong your case is, and that informs your, your negotiating position. I think you're going to figure all that out first um, and then decide what can you sort of pair back with, what can you concede on. You've got to work with the client, of course, on that. But, um, but I think that process, if it's, if it's seven days, I, I would say it's going to be difficult to have the back and forth in that seven days necessary to work all the issues out. And so I think you end up defaulting to whatever the lawyer has prepared to do on that seventh day um, in terms of presenting evidence, identifying the issue. So I think, I think it becomes a situation where if the time is too short, yes, it's an incentive to negotiate something, but the default position for employers, at least, and I would, I would think for, for unions as well, is we're ready to, we're going to be prepared to go on that seventh day, so if we don't get it done by the seventh day, then we're going to a hearing. Um, and that's the concern. One quick question. Um, more or less ambiguity produced during Russian negotiations for stipulation. And, and thank you, um, uh, Member Johnson. And I think that was the second part of Member Miscamara's question. I think the, the problem that I was articulating is there's some issues where um, you may either decide uh, in the course of negotiating a stip to defer certain issues until after the election. You may intentionally not resolve those issues as part of negotiating the stip. Typically, if it's less than 10 percent of the proposed unit, you can do that. Um, but there may be mistakes as to the scope of that, and it may turn out that you have then more challenges post-election because there were issues that you didn't flesh out, didn't resolve, or maybe it's just a situation where you, you were doing it so quickly the parties were talking across each other and, and there wasn't really a meeting of the minds on certain issues and someone seeks to withdraw from the step. So I think those are the types of problems that can arise. Either it's an intentional deferral of issues until after the election or it's simply mistakes are made in the negotiation process that cause disputes to arise that have to be resolved through litigation. Um, as opposed to everyone sort of knows what they agreed to and they move forward under the election agreement. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. Thank you, Fritz.